So hello there and welcome to Ivar's Fly Workshop. Uh, today we are tying an Icelandic pattern called Harpa. Harpa was actually designed somewhere between 1960 and 70 and its it story started in Antakilsa. It was designed for that river here in Iceland since this uh, uncle of mine who designed the fly uh, had the river on a rent so yeah, that's where the story of Harpa began but his daughter is named Harpa as well so the fly is named after his daughter. Uh, we attach uh, of course the thread to the shank and we are using a an uni 80 thread and we'll be using a flat mylar tinsel for the body and we'll start by attaching that stuff to the to the shank of the hook before we do anything further. Uh, one thing with this fly is that it has no tail. There is no tail on the fly and there is no rib. Uh, the body is made out of flat silver and then the rest of the materials will be attached to to the head or to this area where you have the uh, we have the wing and the uh, and the collar or the hackle. And this this fly is like I, I would say totally underrated. Absolutely, it's a really good fly. And we have a beard on the fly, and that is a uh, uh, this Eurasian teal feather. And you'll place that right there. And yeah, he, th this guy, he's like, he taught me a lot of stuff, Burkut, the author of The Fly. He was, yeah, one of the guys who actually let me, you know, when I was only eight or nine years old, he, it didn't bother him if I tied some flies at his wife's. So, and he, he taught me as well, flag casting. So I owe Burkut, like, and his uh, children. A lot. Uh, we attach the beard like this. Then part of the wing, those are the crest feathers of the golden pheasant. We take two of them and they are supposed to, like we say, lean to the shank of the hook. Like um, they're supposed to like face like downwards, not upwards like most of the salmon patterns we are familiar with. And then we snip off the tag end. I know it's not a perfect tying, but it's uh, it's not like we say, not easy to do it in a triple hook. You know, it's always stinging your fingers. Uh, for the wing, we are using a bronze mallard uh, flank. And the uh, the feather is um, something which we yeah pinch off like a good amount and then we fold that together and you can see how see how dark the feather is actually it gives a feather it gives a fly like a yeah it gives it a pretty cool look this fly has proved proved itself to be a really effective pattern when it comes to when it comes to salmon fishing and fishing for sea trout as well. And like I say, this is like a really underrated fly and it hasn't, like we say, it's almost like been forgotten. People know the name of the fly, they like heard the name of the fly, Harpa, but they don't know how it looks. And I'm doing the video here because I want to, yeah, preserve the pattern and and uh, preserve the pattern and uh, keep it like on YouTube for the coming generations to have like an access to to it. It's only like marked in one angling book. 
and that's all. The cheeks of the fly, those are made out of jungle cock. So there is like pretty much stuff coming into the head of the fly, like uh, in a small area, and we are tying up, tying it on, tying the fly on an Esmond Drury hook, an RX Esmond Drury. And you have to be like careful when you're tying it in there because um, you don't want to run out of space. That's a critical thing to be aware of when you're tying tying those smaller flies. And this hook size is number 10. A treble hook number 10. So we'll just trim off the stems of the <coughs> of the jungle cock and uh, when we finish that off we can start to make the head of the fly. And one thing left is the blue collar or the blue hackle that gives you fly like a yeah like a nice look. It's not too big feather we are using for it. We attach it down to the to the head. We've stroked the fibers already. And you can do it again just with you with something like a needle or something. Uh, not something which is too sharp, uh, that will break the stem of the feather. Or just strip the fibers off the feather, we don't want that. I use a hackle plier actually for, for this job. I find it easier to do it with hackle pliers. And it's not easy to control it, especially since it's a treble hook. You will always be like... like uh, with your fingers hitting the point of the hook all the time. It's like, I'm not saying it's like a like a terrible situation, but it's like something which you yeah have to be aware of when you tie a treble hook. So we lock the um, lock the feather in there and do not release the bobbin right there. And we give it like a couple of tight wraps. Let me trim off the existing feather and then we will be um, with our thinner scissors cutting off those tiny fibers which are like sticking not in the way I want them to stick. We'll just cut them off and we'll build up like a little hat on the fly and then the rest of the fibers will just go under the thread. It is, yeah, like I said, it is, it is a really nice pattern. It's a beautiful looking fly. Um, if you want me to tie it like on an original hook, like larger double hook or a single hook, I can do that. If you, if you want, just post it in the comments below. So the only thing left is the uh, is the knot. So I'll do a couple of knots with our rip finishing tool. Trim the end of the um, thread off and give the fly a little coat of varnish. Harpa is a good looking fly. You can just see it on the fly. It's like it's a good fly. It's actually one of a few flies that Burkert designed, but uh, it's definitely, it's like a hit, you know, definitely it works very well. So while we are just finishing the um, paint job, I just want to say thanks for watching and remember to like, share and subscribe the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.